Hey guys, John here. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of the Spyderco military. And the idea behind the military was a question posed to Sal Glesser stating that if your son were to go into the military, what knife would you give him? And this was his rebuttal. And uh, it's a very nice purpose built knife. Um, I'll I'll talk more about the purpose purpose built part as I get it more into the review, but uh, only good things to say about the knife. Really, not a lot of bad things. Um, so I'm going to start off with a class that I would deem this in, which is a tactical knife. And uh, really, a lot of things about this knife is pretty pretty much tactical. Very little of it is EDC. You can start with the size of it, which is quite large. Um, blade length is 4 inches, the handle length is 5.5 inches, overall length is 9.5 inch inches, hole diameter is 14 inches, the weight is 4.25 ounces, and the blade thickness is 4 millimeters, which I do actually like, because it's got a little bit of beef there. So, uh, yeah, I really like to see that extra amount of steel on the spine makes you feel confident in your uh, in your purchase knowing that they didn't bullshit you into some knife that has S30V and has such little steel so they really give you they really give you a good chunk of S30V for your money and uh, so tactical everything about it the size the blade shape the tip which I don't think would survive hard EDC tasks. If you were to EDC this, use it for light things. That's my recommendation. Just opening up packages. Uh, not really a lot of woodwork, more paperwork, more cardboard. But even with the cardboard, you want to stay away from that tip because it's, it's very fine. It's great for penetration, um, but you don't want that to hit any hard materials. You want to preserve that tip. Because it's very nice, and without it, <laughs> without it, it pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, takes away some of the glory from the knife. You want your knives to stay intact. So the steel, like I said, is S30V. There's a stamping on the blade here. I'll try to get see that there. No. Uh, just a tiny bit there. Yeah, there we go. So CPM S30V, crucible metals, yada yada yada, whatever. Blade shape, I would say it's more of a clip point, maybe a Bowie clip. Um, I don't know. I I don't really uh, I don't really uh, know how to deem this blade shape simply because there's there really is not a lot of references to the clip. I know I know the Bowie knife, but just. Spyderco's blade shapes, even though they're really good, they're hard to reference because they all look, look leaf shaped, but they have their own sort of influences from different blade shapes, so it's hard to deem any one blade shape. Um, like I said, the tip is very fine. Um, great for tactical usage, um, not so great for EDC. Again, that's where I would roll in the uh, Endura. The tip has a little bit more strength. Um, Yet again, it is pretty fine. It could still do penetration, not as good as the military, but it could still do that. Because like I said, this could be a tactical knife too, but the tip is strong enough to endure some EDC work, some woodwork. Um, but yeah, like I said again, military is a purpose-built knife. You shouldn't be using it for some sort of hard-use EDC or some crazy stuff. You should never use your knives for any crazy stuff. I mean, it's use the right tool for a job like you know many people say if you need a pry use a pry bar so a little bit of that there it's flat full flat grind I love to see that in knives very it leads to a very acute edge it makes a very sharp edge and uh, overall I think it's a great slicer and for tactical usage I think the slicing capability is almost as necessary as a penetration capability because, uh, like I so I never said this before, I just keep on saying like I said, but 
uh, slashing is more, in my view, is more defensive and penetration. Yeah, it could be defensive, but in most cases it is more offensive. So, either way, whatever the knife is used for. Um, factory edge on it, the geometry is very well done. Uh, try to lean this into the camera. Um, I'll try to get this in focus. So what I wanted to say about the geometry is that it's ground, it's ground very, very well. Um, try to get it like this. So you can barely see that, but geometry is done very well. Very sharp out of the factory. Sharpest Spyderco I've pretty much ever bought. Um, and then again, you could pretty much correlate that because it's made in America. So American quality. Not to say that all any other Spydercos, you know, came dull. I mean, my Tenacious and my Endura both came very sharp, but this one I was actually able to shave with it and draw blood. Check out my video shaving with uh, Spyderco Military, and you'll see what I mean. Um, the handle material is a G10. This it comes in uh, comes in orange, black, Digicam, and. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know, maybe I might, I don't know. But that's all I have off the top of my head. You can see it's slightly translucent there. You can see the aluminum backspacer. Um, so what's next? Construction. Construction is partial pillar, par, par, partial spaced. So I actually like this design because it's, it's easy to clean yet uh, you, you get the strength of a spacer. So I think knives with spacers are really strong. I think much stronger than uh, pillar constructed knives, but um, some may arg argue with that, but I just think that the full back spacer just adds a lot more surface area in contact with the two handle halves and that just makes it stronger. Um, you see a lanyard hole right here. The diameter looks fairly small but the thickness over here is fairly wide. Well, I'm not to say that this this won't accommodate 550 paracord. It would, but in comparison to the spacer right here, you can see that this is much wider than the hole, which means that you have an extra pillar right there. So just in case anyone was wondering, this is, uh, that, ad that adds extra stability to the back of the knife. Oh, let's see, talking points, talking points. Uh, pivot screw, it's pretty beefy on this one. I like how they put the the portion where you're supposed to screw in it in the back so the front remains um, remains uh, clean, it has a very clean look. So I like that pretty beefed up um, pivot screw, like I said. Um, it, can, it looks very strong. Um, well, not just looks, but I'm sure it is very strong. Uh, so this blade is running on a pretty thick uh, screw, so you can you know that this is a pretty strong design made for some hard hard du duty work, not EDC tactical stuff. And I'm sure many of you know what I mean by tactical, like fighting. And uh, let's see, lock up. Oh, man, this camera sucks. I'm trying to. Trying to focus on in on everything, but sort of hard. So, um, uh, lockup is about 45 to 50 percent on the liner lock. Um, not much has changed since I got the knife, so it rides in pretty slowly. Um, not exceptionally fast, so it rides pretty good. Oh, you see that there? Yeah. So you can see the lock up there. It's very nice. It's not it's not radius. Like I saw the video on lock up from J J Davis eight eight two, how on the Striders it's radius and that can lead to some problems. Like you have to buy new stop stop pins. But this one is not radius. It's more flat. So it's pretty good lock up. Very strong too. And this is this might get into the debate of whether a liner lock is as strong as a lockback. Um, honestly, if you ask me, I think a liner lock 
can be as strong as a lockback. And not like triad lock lockbacks, but, lo but like uh, lockbacks on the Endura. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really uh, doubt the liner lock. I think it's a pretty good lock. Um, I might make a separate video on that discussing what I mean. Let's see. Um, the liners are nested. There's no liners on one half, but there's partial liners on the other half just for the lockup, obviously. They're nice and nested, so it's all very clean, very nice finish. Um, so it saves a lot of weight, even though this knife is pretty big. Nice thick slabs of G10, so you're not losing any strength either. You know, uh, G10 is much lighter than steel, so better to have more G10 than there is steel. And it does make a better grip. Feels good in the hand. And uh, let's see what else I have here. The deployment. Uh, deployment. I'd say it's smooth. Um, could it be smoother? Yes. Um, it does ride on bronze phosphorus bushings. Uh, but then again, uh, is it the most, does it deploy the most smooth or the smoothest? No, not at all. But can you add some oil in there and make it smoother? I'm sure you can. I mean, here's some ballastol right here. This will, this will make every, any knife just a lot smoother. So I'm just test. I was testing it straight from the factory. I'm doing all the standard protocol. So no lube, no sharpening, just dropping. So, is it the smoothest knife to, you know, with the smoothest bushings? No, it's not. Is it sm is it is it smooth enough? Yes, it is. So um. So yeah, so, uh, deployment is decent. Uh, like I said, bronze phosphorus bushings. Uh, one thing I noticed that I'm not sure a lot of people notice um, when it comes to knives, but the Ricasso on this is pretty long, and that's not that's not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is, I think the Ricasso adds some, um, I don't know how to say this, horizontal or torsional strength to the knife, because there's more steel being in being embedded between the two uh, handle halves. I think that adds in more side to side uh, stability. Um, it makes the knife more tighter, makes it less prone to getting side to side movement. And and uh, before I forget to say this, there's no play in this knife, as to be expected with all knives made in America. And all Spyderco knives too. All Spyderco knives are very, very well built, no matter which country they're made in. Some may, some may, uh, some models might not be, might not be perfect, but this one gets it right. So. But yeah, I think this extended tang adds some uh, some torsional strength to the knife, and uh, I don't know. I mean, just leave a comment about this because I don't know if my theory is right or wrong. So give me your opinion on it, and uh, and we'll see what happens from there. So uh, stop pin on the knife is pretty healthy, uh, as you can see there. So nothing to compl to complain about. It looks like it's riding on some pretty good uh, stop pins. I don't think you'll have a problem there. Uh, ergonomics uh, grip, amazing, as like on all Spyderco's. This one just feels great. Reverse grip too. Uh, 